Good evening, and welcome to the Thursday Camera Artist Guild Critique. I am your host, George Deloach. I'm a portrait artist and photographer's coach, and this is where we help photographers learn to master the photographic arts. Here we do critique. This is where you send your images in, and a second set of eyes takes a look at those images and tries to help you find ways that you can improve the quality of your work. Regardless of whether you're just beginning your love affair with photography or whether you've been like me in love with it for 50 years, there's always room to find new places to grow and develop. So be, definitely be willing to come involve yourself in the process. Now, if you're there and you decide, hey, look, I'd like to become part of the process, how do I do it? I'll tell you. Simply go over to Facebook and find the Camera Artist Guild page and ask to join. I'll bring you into the group and then you simply write a message and attach your image to that, that image. Your message can be how the settings that you use for the camera or any other pertinent information you feel you want to share with that image. We have almost 1900 photographers from all around the world that will share with you their thoughts and their feelings about your work as well as those images will be selected uh, for Thursday critique. Now, it makes no difference whether you're in Singapore, Nairobi, uh, Johannesburg, uh, Bangladesh, uh, Mombasa. It doesn't make a bit of difference where you are in the world. We want you as part of the group, and you are welcome as part of the group. And we have people from all of the areas besides the United States and Canada. So I look forward to seeing you come and join the group. Now, before we get going, let me share with you a couple of other learning opportunities that there are. Uh, I, have, I am play, putting on a workshop for Professional Photographers of America call their Super One Day Workshops. That'll be in October. Go to the PPA website and get the exact date and sign up for the course. It is going to be on lighting, creative lighting, and we will spend the first portion of the day uh, working on basically classroom stuff, and then the second portion of the day we will be literally in the studio building lighting setups and photographing. So it's an opportunity for you to to learn and to put into practical application the things that you learn. So by all means we have people come to the workshop from all over the country. Uh, there is inexpensive uh, housing not too far away from the studio. It's only one day so we have a lot of fun. We pack a lot of stuff in there from 930 to 5. So keep that in mind and, you, and I look forward to seeing you. Also, I still have the uh, workshop, uh, there's still, uh, I still have, uh, there's still some vacancies for the workshop at the Ghost Ranch, at Georgia O'Keeffe's legendary Ghost Ranch in northern New Mexico. That's going to be September the 15th through the 20th, and that's going to be on environmental portraiture and landscape. We're literally going to go into some of the most beautiful landscaped areas of the country, with uh, some great architecture, adobe and cabins, and we're going to do environmental portraiture. We're going to merge available light with artificial light. We're going to work on all of the different camera settings and lens selections. And again, you can be at any level. You can be at a beginning level or an advanced level. There'll be stuff there for everybody. And then you are going to be able to uh, be in a very beautiful area of the country. So. I hope that you come join me for those days. So that takes care of ba the basics. Uh, let's get over to the broadcast and take a look at some of those images. Okay, stand by. Uh, first image is Wanda Day Lewis. Wanda, Wanda and the baby. I, I, I'm not sure whether this is your 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 baby or not. I think I can't remember exactly from the write up what was said about it. But I mean, you know, lovely little chubby cheek baby. Uh, being a, a grandfather of a nine-month-old, uh, I just am enamored by babies. Uh, when my own kid was born, I guess I was too close to it to really see the joy in the development. But uh, here you've got a great shot there and a great expression. And it's all about expression. The, the little kid is just beginning to develop the ability to smile and to uh, share back facial expressions. So. Uh, your exposure is on, you caught it well, you caught a nice expression. Uh, baby photography is a real challenge and a real discipline in its own. Same way with pet photography 
or a product or wedding or whatever. There's things that you learn in working with babies. So if you're taking your own baby, that's fine. But here, remember uh, to uh, not uh, cut off the hand. You, you uh, crop right through the hand here, right through the knuckle there. We wanna see that whole hand. Some of the standard posing goes, even though it's infants, and I know they don't want to pose, and you can't get, they can't listen, and they don't understand what you're saying, but you just have to have a bunch of patience and work through it with them. So back off a little bit, leave yourself more room around the, the, the kid than you think you need, and that will take care of those areas so that when you do crop the image, uh, you'll have enough there to play with. Almost every camera, even crop sensor cameras, uh, are high enough resolution that you can afford to back off a little bit and show the upper torso uh, of the kid. And the only other thing that helps out at the time is to have a, a baby wrangler or a helper along with you. Uh, keep towels and all like that. Just wipe that spit real quick off the chin and then bam, take that image and it will pop, pop it right on up to the next level. Okay, Wanda, thank you on that one. This one, I love this one. Uh, you got a nice chair there, I love the chair. Uh, you're working away at it. I think that the image could probably be cropped in a little tighter. I don't think all of the upper chair up there really adds that much to the image. I'm just going to, uh, let's go to a four by five crop, which of course is my favorite. You guys probably know that. Uh, and let's throw a four by five crop in there. And of course you gotta watch out for cropping off the hand. Again, the hand is missing. So I'm not gonna crop it off there on this one. But uh, something, I wonder, I just, you know, horizontal, no, uh-uh. So let's go back to vertical. Uh, I think that's a little stronger image. I would like to see the legs. I like to see the hand. So go to vertical. Uh, or go to horizontal, go to landscape mode in this one. Uh, and I think uh, the image will be a stronger image and you can afford to lose the top of the chair. It's not going to take away anything from the image. Okay, nice. Thank you, Wanda. Steve Perry. Wow, Steve, you really stepped out and gone to something completely different this time. Uh, Steve, we're looking at uh, a, a still life uh, as opposed to your normal portraits, but uh, this gives you time to work at it. Uh, I love doing still lifes like this. Uh, study the work of the great paint masters of the Baroque and the Rococo era, uh, of the Flemish and Dutch painters of the uh, 15th, 16th, and 17th century, and see how they prop how they uh, compose, and then how they light each image. Now I know you say, well, George, they don't light it, they paint it, but it's just a different medium. Photography is one medium, paint is another medium. We're still working with light and shadow, with, and color, hue, and luminosity. So check out how they put that together. This is nice, and you've done a lot of cool things with it, but I think it could pop on up to the next level uh, propping wise, if you just study some of the some of the, the works of the of, of the masters there, and try to emulate it, uh, I've done some of it. It is not easy. It's it seems like it might be easy, but it is a real challenge. So spend your time researching the artwork and then step on into it. But still, it's a nice image, Steve. Thank you. And hey, Diana, I see Diana's in the house. All right, Michael Montgomery, Positive Images. Uh, interesting, interesting uh, image. I have uh, what, what the, 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 the film, comp, film, movie, cinema, calls them cuculoruses. And uh, sometimes cookie cutters, but for the most part it's called a cuculorus, which projects a, a shadow pattern, a window, blinds, other stuff like that on people's faces. I'm not sure whether this is an actual blind or whether you were using a, a, a cuculorus to do this, but it is an interesting image and uh, it's well exposed and well executed. So nice, Michael. 
Okay, this is another Michael Montgomery. Uh, you're up there in Palmdale in the desert, and uh, you and John Harvell both live uh, relatively close to each other out there. And I, for one, do not understand why anybody would want to go out into the desert and tag a rock. That that just doesn't it doesn't register with me. I'm I'm sorry, I just can't understand it. But they tagged it, and it's there. Uh, I like the the direction that you're headed in. But I think knowing how well you can handle your available light and artificial light combination, uh, I think this one's missing an additional light source. Uh, or working with the sun you have there and reflectors, or even a silk up there to knock the sun down so you can raise the shadow values. Right now, her face and her arm are in shadow. This arm is leaving this dark bar going across her upper torso and her whole face is in shadow. The dress is so bright that your eyes go to the dress area and to the funnel rock down there that's getting the sun. And it makes it difficult to see her face and discern any feeling or emotion from the image. Also, she's kind of posed a little backwards. You want most of the weight on that rear leg. And it is kind of, but you want a different torso twist to it so that uh, it brings out an S curve in the torso. Uh, the uh, arm overhead uh, pose is a difficult one to pull off. Uh, my old teachers used to call that the armpit shot. And uh, so think about it. I think that if you did not want to add, let's say you, you say, well, if I throw in artificial light, I come in here, camera left, and I put up a soft box, it's going to illuminate this light and it's not going to look natural. I don't want to do that. The other alternative is to use a silk, uh, a 4x4 four four or a 4x8 silk that would block the sun here. And in blocking the sun, it would tone down the sun, drop the sun a couple of stops. And dropping the sun a couple of stops, it would allow this area now to come into closer ratio between the sun and it. Of course, it means setting up a silk and going through the effort to go there. but. Uh, it's a possibility and uh, it just takes a little time to set it up. Uh, uh, Sunlighter has a thing they call the sun swatter which can be held by one person and it's on a pole with a big uh, translucent uh, sheet. What a, what a silk is is a translucent sheet of varying uh, opacity uh, depending upon whether it's a, a, a one or a half stop or whatever and it acts as the same thing as it does on diffusion on the front of a softbox. It does with the sun. It diffuses it and it reduces its volume. Uh, 